hi, my name is Lee Brock and I am one of the co-artistic directors of the Barrett Group. And for those of you who don't know uh, the Barrett Group, we are a nonprofit theater company and training program located in New York City, which we work with a very specific acting aesthetic to help the actor get looser, more spontaneous, more like uh, the audience is watching real, you know, real people in real situations. But uh, this afternoon, it was it is my divine pleasure to be talking with the um, fabulous uh, Matthew Shear. And Matthew is um, such a charming, uh, talented uh, actor. And we're so um, blessed that you are um, with us um, today. So uh, welcome, Matthew. Um, so <laughs> first of all, maybe if we could, and I welcome everybody uh, that's here, and if we could just actually keep our uh, cameras off, that would be fantastic. And if you have questions for uh, Matthew also, you can write them in the chat, and I will ask uh, those questions uh, uh, to Matthew. So um, so great, we're going to uh, uh, talk about all your you know, major accomplishments that you have uh, done in the last, um, you know, 10 years, but just throwing that out, uh, maybe my first question is like, well, what have you learned in the last 10 years, Matthew? <laughs> um, well, you, you did, you sort of softballed that question to me just before when we were saying hi, and I, right. I still don't have a good answer coming to mind, but um, I suppose one, one thing I've learned that, I think does tie into the kind of the Vera group philosophy um, or, you know, technique uh, is, is that like, your know, ten tension is, is a very um, powerful uh, tool and also obstacle. Um, and, and that in, in life, and I think also in, art um and you know i feel like that's more and more something i you know i i kind of grapple with in a in a you know sim simpler way right 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 that's uh that's wonderful and you were just also uh sharing with us that you are um a new father and you you and yes. your wife sarah have just had a baby so how was this whole experience? Yes, that 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 also has a lot of tension and you know release involved in you know many ways. Um, that yeah, that that has been. Uh, it, uh, our, we have a daughter Joni who was born um, in August, so she's uh, four months old, and it, you know it's been this uh, incredible life affirming journey you know, that uh, has surprised me in, in so many ways. And, you know, I was pretty terrified going into it. Uh, and then it just was there and it was, you know, something I was doing and it was pretty much wonderful. So that is so fantastic. I'm happy. I'm getting it. all these chats, um, these chats coming in. Congratulations, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. thank you. <laughs> so, um, so you were you were born and raised in New York, is that correct? Yes, I, I was born in Manhattan, uh, and I lived here till I was seven, and then I moved to the suburbs uh -huh. in uh, Westchester and lived in Larchmont, you uh -huh. know, for the rest of my uh, boyhood. Uh huh. And so, uh, did you? When did you know that you wanted to uh, pursue acting or go into acting? I knew when I was in middle school. I yes, I. Uh, I don't really even know why, but I thought to audition for The Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and I I sort of suddenly got a lot of like I auditioned and I got very cocky all of a sudden. I thought I was going to be the lion, and then I was cast as the Osgard, oh, um, okay. you know, who is who you may be. Yes, exactly. He <laughs> sticks his hat out. That's a horse of a different color. And in the musical uh, or the stage version, he maybe even the movie too. He has a song, um, and and 
you know, so at, at first I was disappointed, but then, you know, I, I realized, wow, I've got a lot to do. And um, so it was a humble beginning, but I, I, I was like, this is, this is awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. And did your high school, did your high school have a nice uh, drama program? Yeah, it did. And, and, and I kind of followed in my brother, my older brother's footsteps, who's uh, four years older than me. Um, and he went through this, um, this drama program at my high school that was like very, actually very well developed and um, was like a separate class that we took for all four years. And, you know, we studied uh, modern dance and music and, uh, and theater. And yeah, once I kind of went into that, it was like game over for That's me. Fabulous. Yeah. That's wonderful. And so uh, what year did you come to the Barrow Group here with us? You studied with us. Sure, yeah, probably, probably like, probably about 10 years ago. 10 years ago, right? That was about 10 Yeah, years. I mean, I think I probably started before I met my wife. Right. Um, and we've been together about 10 years. So 10 years, right. I think just yeah. before. Just uh, before. So, yeah. Right. And you took lots of classes with us. And I remember also um, you wanted to get into the Wednesday night class. And I went, okay, mm -hmm. I'll put you in the Wednesday night class with Seth. And um, yes. when I was teaching that class, that first Wednesday night class uh, that you came into that class and you were absolutely magnificent in that class. Oh, um, it was, that was, amazing. yeah, that was an incredible experience. Wow. Uh, and so, I started at the Barrett Group with um, my first teacher was Chris Wells, uh, who, you know, and, and I, I'll say that when I, you know, first started at the Barrett Group, I, I, I had like a man, I had a manager, but I was, I couldn't get any jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the manager at the time, I think, recommended the Barrett Group. So okay. I went um and it changed it really it, both in a practical sense it changed you know that trajectory I started getting you know little things um but yeah just in, in terms of my interest and appreciation for acting you know Chris's class like totally you know just helped me kind of take off and then yeah and then with your yours and and Seth's class that was really like getting to see you know these incredible actors who you know were at you know very high level of their craft just putting on you know these very challenging scenes and getting to see like Ibsen and Shakespeare and you know like and feeling like this is the best version of this I've ever seen mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and really like being so involved in the, the mm -hmm. scene work that people are doing. Yeah, yeah, uh, so wonderful. So, and can you recall even like even in Chris's class or uh, Seth's or my class, like, you know, any sort of tools that you came away with uh, that have helped you um, in your journey here? Yeah, I, yes, I, I th I'm always referencing tools and even Seth's book, uh, I, I, I look at, um, you know, especially in like, desperate moments where I've you know in a, in a, a scary situation um yeah I mean there, there's so many I mean the the just the the basic uh appreciation for um you know the story in a scene and you know getting a sense of the where the climax is and kind of finding tools to sort of let that story be told without mm -hmm. getting in the way and sort of getting in my own head about like my character and where my character is supposed to go, but just sort of like, you know, playing a part in a whole, um, that really was transformative to me and, and, and is something I, I utilize all the time. Um, and, and, and in, you know, sort of micro ways, the, I love the tool of, uh, you know, finding the kind of most important line or, you know, moment in a monologue or, or some, you know, section of a scene and then kind of throwing everything away except for yeah. that one thing that that's always 
and that always seems to work at least in my opinion that's I'm great. not sure that's yeah. great so um oh that's you know those are always you know those are always like you know really fabulous tools um and so yeah. you were working... I, I could list, i could rattle off more but go go on <laughs> yeah so this uh this show that you're working on now the alienist uh, you play a detective is that right yeah can you tell us a little bit about this show yeah um so this is a show that's based on a a, a, a series of novels um, by uh, Caleb Carr, and they're, you know, these kind of dark period pieces um, set in the late 1800s, and the, you know, the stories are, are, are very grim and involve, you know, terrible murders of children and, you know, animals, and it's just, it, it's not, it, it, it's not for everybody. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, <laughs> but, you know, I, I play some something of a light somewhat light-hearted character uh, a Jewish detective um who's kind of the you know the like forensics like early forensics um version of you know what you'd see on like CSI or something like the the mm -hmm. computer wonk um you know I, I, but I have just very primitive tools mm -hmm. at, at my disposal for you know looking busy and drawing conclusions mm -hmm. um but it, it it it's a really fun show to work on and it has an amazing cast and like was definitely the biggest uh thing that I'd ever you know worked on it shoots in Budapest in in Hungary um so yeah so I I spent a total of a year in Budapest between the two seasons That's um and it's, so and that it's was very it's We've had yeah two seasons, and it's pro I should add that it's probably over. It was a limited series, oh, I um, so you know I, there's like a I guess a chance that they'll come back, but no 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 certainty. So and um, what uh, and what uh, network is, is that on, or where can we see? That? Uh, it was it, it's on TNT. It, okay. You can it, it, you can stream it on uh, HBO Max. Okay. Oh, HBO Max. Okay. So that's that's yeah. wonderful. That's that's fantastic. Congratulations on that. And what? Thank were, you. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, so with that, like, what were some challenges uh, that you had? Um, you know, working on that show. Any any challenges? Yeah, I would say like. Probably the most challenging feature of that experience was trying to kind of find a private, you know, personal um, engagement with the material and, you know, my acting partners, um, given, you know, just the amount of uh scenery and extras and you know period stuff and like many cameras going at once like um it, it, it was at times hard to kind of just return to what I think acting is all about which is just like talking and you know sort of the conversation exercise type thing like just mm -hmm. finding finding a way to just be a person talking to another person and mm -hmm. you know something's happening and you're kind of trying to deal with it um and yeah and I think uh one of the you know I think one of the nice things about working with other people is that they're trying to do that too so you're you're kind of that collective you know endeavor can be very encouraging uh-huh that's, that's um, but it's intimidating yeah yeah right so just within that like uh so when when you are like you know anxious or when you are a little nervous or that you know the maybe the costume's a little too hot or that the cameras <laughs> are coming you know at you uh too fast are there very specific tools that you throw yourself to help yourself uh when you're you know when you're feeling anxious or nervous about stuff yeah, I mean, I think one thing that I try to do is kind of just accept the the circumstance I'm in, you know, as an actor, like that this is intense and it is doing something to me and, um, 
you know, I might be sweating, I might be a little jittery or whatever. Um, and that, you know, yeah. And I feel like I definitely learned this in your class, we like mm -hmm. finding a way to sort of slip into the dialogue mm -hmm. in within that physicality, you mm -hmm. know, and then sort of seeing if, if that can help you just, you know, slip into the, into the scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, yeah. that, that's always, always useful. That's great. As you just kind of said, embracing it, just kind of like, okay, this is what's going on with me. I'm sweating. This is what's <laughs> going on with me. Embracing yeah. me. That's, uh, that's yeah. 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 That's great. That's great. Um, and then you have done, you've done so many films with uh, Noah Baumbach. So, yeah, so many incredible things and uh, so exciting. So working with <laughs> Noah and all of, all of these films, we can talk about all of the, all of the incredible films that you've uh, worked on with him. Um, so what, what do you observe in his process that you either relate to or uh, that you respect in his artistry? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I, I, I love working with Noah. He, I, you know, he's uh, a great guy and, you know, we've worked, uh, you know, together a number of times and are friends and I, 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 you know, so that adds a, a layer of comfort to, you know, getting on these, in, you know, also kind of intimidating in a very different way type of uh project um but but you know i started on working with him on uh on mistress america mistress and america with yes Lola kirk was on too and now with lola, lola kirk, kirk yes yeah. and did yes. you know that and lola had studied we didn't America? know each other beforehand but we um you know quickly connected over the bar group and then even took a class together after we shot to kind of we both didn't have jobs. So we just went right back in. Um, and yeah, so Lola, uh, that was an amazing experience and uh, with her and she's incredible in it and so, so easy and fun to work with. Um, and Noah, like, you know, like at first working with him, like I didn't know his process at all. And that was, uh, that, you know, had a learning curve for me, like he, is someone who uh, likes to do, you know, regularly a many, many, many takes. Um, and, you know, I didn't, he didn't sort of give me the heads up on that. So I, you know, did my first scene with him and Lola actually. Uh, and we got, you know, we were at like take 10 or something. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get fired. You know, like this is going horribly. I just like was in a complete panic. Um, and I, you know, and I said to Lola, like, is this, this was our first day. We didn't really know each other. Is, is this normal? She was like, oh, like he's, every scene is like this, like, you know, don't worry about it. it, it it's not you. Um, right, right, right. And, you know, could have been me, who knows, but uh, it, it is true that every, uh, my experience, I don't think I've ever done, you know, less than eight to 10 takes with him. And, and, and sometimes, he, you know, there are things that he, he goes in, you know, and does like 50 takes or something. It's, it's very meticulous. And, but, yeah. but one thing that, that is wonderful about it is that like, it, it isn't, he's not like throwing tons of notes at you or anything like that. It's just very small adjustments. Yeah. And it, it has a real kind of rehearsal spirit. So yeah. you, you get like just another chance to, to do it over and over and over again. It's, it ends up being kind of fun. Yeah. And so wonderful to observe, like you were, you were saying, oh, we were doing uh, 10 takes on this. And I was thinking, oh, I was going to get fired. But, um, you know, how did like, you know, actors were so sensitive. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so uh, really understanding, you know, Noah's process that, as you said, he's so meticulous as a filmmaker and such an extraordinary filmmaker that as actors, how can we even practice letting go of 
taking it so personally or you know taking right. it personally it's like well maybe they're working on something else here and and again those tools to okay let me just keep doing what i'm doing and yeah talking to lola and uh um yeah just calming the system down a little bit so um so that yeah. we're not taking it so personally that you are part of the bigger process on that and um uh <laughs> yeah. i mean i i wish i could do that uh more than than i you know than i do but i i am you know as, as you've said about lots of actors like i'm very sensitive and i sort of pick up cues that that probably don't don't exist um you know here and there and and that can sort of uh, throw me but but maybe there's also a way in which that is like a hyper involvement in in, in what I'm doing and right. you know and has some positive yeah. element to it. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I think I think all creatives are very sensitive. You know, I think yeah, yeah. sensitive, and we kind of pick up all of all of that stuff, and that's even part of the whole creative process. And and um, yeah, so that's all part of it. And and I yeah, think in that creative process, we don't talk about the um, the things that are even more frustrating or um, uh, you know, nerve wracking, uh, just because you're just kind of creating. So there is that, as you were talking about tension, like, you know, I asked you, yeah. like, what have you learned in the last 10 years? It's yeah. like tension is all part of it. So tension yes. in the creative process is, is it can be frustrating. It can be, uh, just all consuming. And we think, wait, wait, this should be fun. This should be, but it's like, so, uh, whatever that, wherever that tension is going to come and just, you know. Totally yeah. Fun. Yes. And I think one, creative or important creative avenue for tension is is like you know not uh or one thing i try to do is is not you know just sort of by force of will like erase it um right. you know because that's impossible uh and you know it, 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 the i guess the question for me is it is there a way to enter the the tension and you know, in a way that sort of like, you know, lets me kind of um, open up into the, you know, the piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just to open, you know, to, a way to enter the tension so you can open into the piece. That's uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so, and you've kind of worked with so many, uh, with Noah's films too. So uh, you were able to work with Dustin Hoffman and uh, how was that? Any funny stories with working with Dustin Hoffman? <laughs> um, it, it was, uh, it was a, a delight. He was, you know, very kind of goofy and um, very like easy to be around. Uh -huh. uh, somehow <laughs> um, and and uh yeah and 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 just a lot of fun to kind of watch and be in a scene with and um and 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 yeah like had no pretension to him would would was very you know I don't uh, like he he seemed to kind of be hard on himself and 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 be working things out and like just was a you know, a very like involved uh, actor, which yeah. was, you know, yeah. it, it, fun to see. Yeah. And that yeah. whole thing, like, you know, like actors, we are hard on ourselves, right? That whole thing about, you know, being hard on ourselves. And I know that I'm always kind of saying, oh, how can we just, you know, uh, let that go or just be easier with ourselves and be gentle and just keep practicing. But I think that as we were talking about that tension, that's all kind of part of the, the creative process about yeah. uh, kind of refining and discovering stuff and, and working on stuff. Um, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, amazing. So out of all of those, uh, out of all of the, the parts that you've played, um, any favorites that you've, that you've, um, that you've done? Let's see. Um, well, One one really special one was uh, I got to play like a romantic lead in a movie called uh, The Boy Downstairs um, that uh, I, I 
starred in with Sasha Mamet. And, um, you know, that, that was like a, a, a role that, you know, I, I was very pleased to, to get and I, I, you know, was excited to work on it, but I felt kind of far from that type. And I, I um, and, and it had, you know, a, a kind of romantic, like, spirit to it that uh, I, you know, generally sort of in my own uh, personal life tend to kind of tease and, you know, make fun of. So you know, to, to have to take that seriously and like, you know, find my way in and, and the, the director, uh, uh, her name is Sophie Brooks. She was just so wonderful and so um, encouraging. And, you know, it was like very different, you know, just sort of thinking of Noah's style. It was like a completely different style, very, um, you know, kind of free and quick. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it wasn't this sort of thing that you were sculpting it was just sort of mm -hmm. like shooting and and sort of embracing the the moment and then mm -hmm. moving on mm -hmm. um so and, she and that was do yeah one take or just kind of like one take on stuff sometimes one take you usually it was sort of more like a like three takes or something like a mm -hmm. you know one kind of but but she, she was so confident and um and and so good at kind of you know making adjustments uh mm -hmm. that it, it was just this like this this true pleasure to 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 work on and, and and to sort of be it was my first kind of true lead in a in a film so that that was uh you know a a, a scary prospect but like with these collaborators it was just it was really fun so that's right. a favorite yeah. yeah so that's a favorite and that that premiered at the, the Tribeca Film Festival right in 2017 yes. right mm -hmm. and so yep. uh so when you said that was really scary to your kind of first lead in the film yes I guess this is a theme I'm scared all the time yeah. so just I even guess, that yeah. so just even so yeah. uh uh just you know that was you it was scary to uh, be the lead in the film or what what was scary about it carrying the um, or taking the obligation. Yeah, well, I guess I, sorry. Yeah, like what, what was scary about- uh, What was scary about it? Yeah, what was um, scary? We can, we'll go through each of my roles and I'll <laughs> describe what was scary about it. Um, <laughs> uh, I will, I'll say that that one was, yeah, I think it was new to, uh, you know, step into a like, romantic lead role it, you know the role was written kind of you know in in a way that I was right for it um but it was it was legitimately like the the the, the romantic the romantic interest of of the the true lead Zasha's uh you know Zasha's character um and you know I I guess I up to that point had had more seen myself you know, in this sort of character actor mold of like, you know, being in in an ensemble and finding my kind of my part, uh, you know, within a larger whole, um, and not really being the exact focus of of right. of, of, of a film, um, and you know, and I wasn't the exact focus, but I was one of the you know main focuses. So I, yeah, I, I just, it was an, adju an adjustment of how I thought of myself as an actor. Right. Um, and yeah, and I guess that, that was something that I, yeah, I wasn't sure what it would, what it would feel like. Yeah, um, isn't that fascinating? Yeah. That's fascinating, just even our perception of the way that we perceive ourselves. Like you're, you're total leading man. You're a total leading man. You're total, you know, all of it. As you can tell by your career, you're like all over the place. So, but just even that idea that, uh, oh, I don't quite see myself in this leading man character. And then I'm going to yeah. be the, the playing this leading man part, uh, bring stuff up for us. But it's just an idea of how we see ourselves that you go, oh, I, I see myself as this character actor, not the leading man. And um, 
how that brings, as you said, kind of uh, fears up for us. But so fast yeah. that you were given the opportunity. But it, but it is, it, that I feel like that is a, a, another kind of general creative principle um, to consider. Like when, when you, are confronted with a, a scenario that you know you you sort of don't see yourself in like the you know the the chance to to try and push push through that is can be very rewarding i mean it starts you know you can certainly fall on your face too um but that's part of the the thrill i guess yeah, but I mean, do you think that you've fallen on your face in any of the things that you've done? <laughs> in any, uh, I mean, in in yes, in, in, in I mean, not not like uh, you know, in any sort of like um, public relations, uh, you know, fiasco. Um, but in, in terms of like just taking a, taking risks uh, as as an actor, like I, I feel like I have given myself permission to, you know, do something, you know, the, I, this is another a tool that I love was like the big bad actor thing, like just trying something big, you know, like not sort of falling into that, that, that rhythm of like making everything so small all the time. Like, you know, what if, what if this moment does call for something big and, you know, and then it doesn't work and then you kind of try something else. I mean, that's the, yeah beauty of yeah. kind of rehearsing yeah. and doing takes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so great. I do have a question here from a, um, uh, um, okay, this question in the chat. Um, being a non-actor, tell me a little bit about what it's like working with a fellow Bear Group alum. What is the connection like? Is it comfort or, or approach or something else? So maybe like working with Lola as opposed to someone that's not a Bear Group alum. Yeah, what what is it like working with a fellow Bear Group alum? I think it's really nice to look, work with a Bear Group alum because there's kind of a, <laughs> you know, well, I think there's sort of a shared um, language uh, of just, you know, the, the kinds of things that we throw around at the Bear Group, um, but also like, I, I think in in general the bear group you know is not prescriptive and it and, and you know the, there's no sort of like uh overarching ideology to it so if you're working with someone from the bear group you can kind of relax and know that you're not going to have to dance around someone's sort of like you know uh business um i don't i'm not even sure what i mean by that but like uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a relaxed feeling that, you know, you're not going to kind of be put up against something that's obtrusive. Right, right. Yeah. And as you said, a common language, like a little bit of a common language. And so you can relax a little bit more. And then there's another comment said, also, I totally agree. Leading man, leading man, leading man. Happy face. Thank you. <laughs> Right, Matthew. Oh my goodness gracious! Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Um. That's like. So it's so true. So. Um. Um. So. Um. Yeah. So do you have a? Do you find in your? Uh. Is your process? Is it getting easier? Like when you're kind of working on. Um. You know the the. Um. Well, the new script, I think that you're working on a new thing with Noah Baumbach, um, right? The uh, white noise, uh, is it? Yes, I worked, uh, yes, I worked on it. Um, okay. So in, just like, even within your process, do you find that that's, it's getting easier than it was maybe two years ago, three years ago, or do different um, roles give you different challenges? Is that... Do you understand the question? Yeah, no, that's a good, it's just a good question. Um, trying to sort it out. Uh, I would say it, I, I would say it gets, for me, it gets um, both harder and easier at once. Like um, <laughs> easier in the sense that I like kind of know what it's like to be on set and, 
you know, right. work with a famous actor, like I kind of have done that. And I, I sort of, I, I can approach that with a little more sort of, you know, cool or uh, I can be myself a little bit more. Um, but the, I think the, then the, the pressure somehow comes on to like, you know, the thing itself, like, am I, getting this right, um, you know, can, like, how can I push myself in the next take to do something fresh? Um, you know, like, uh, all, just, just a, 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 I guess I, I, I feel like as I've grown as an actor, I've also sort of, you know, my taste and tolerance for, you know, the, maybe the, the sort of easy ways in which I sometimes approach things ha has lessened mm -hmm. or, or, or sorry, my, yeah, my tolerance for it has, has lessened. And, and I guess I, maybe my taste for myself <laughs> has grown. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, not sure um, how I got there. And I think this kind of refers, I have another question then the, uh, the chat just kind of refers to like what we were talking about. Uh, um, when you first started auditioning, when did you start to feel very comfortable versus trying to play a character? Meaning that, that to play a character is sort of the, like putting something on. Right, 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 right. Uh -huh. So even if you're um, you said comfortable um, as versus playing a character. And interesting, like, yeah, so I'll let you answer that question and then yeah. I'll on something. Um, I would say like, I still feel uncomfortable auditioning. Uh -huh. um, you Thank know, you sometimes, <laughs> sorry. Thank you for your honesty, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still feel uncomfortable auditioning. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's like the fun thing to do is, you know, and the, the challenging and, well, this is maybe, not always true, but the, the, the most fun and creative thing to do is to actually do the thing and be, you know, working and of course. Um, and auditioning is sort of like this, you know, uh, shadow, you know, version of, of what you might offer. Um, and so I, I, you know, I think, I think I get comfortable, you know, um, in certain auditions, there are certain kinds of characters or writing or um, even a casting director that I kind of maybe have a, you know, relationship with, like that has an impact. Um, but I, I wouldn't say there's like a, you know, some kind of linear, you know, comfort, yeah, or yeah, expansion of comfort. Right, absolutely, totally, totally agree with that. And um, so when you're auditioning for, do you do a lot of self tapes? Yeah, yeah. So in your self tapes, uh, still, still feeling, you know, uncomfortable about even those self tapes, are there any sort of tools that you throw to yourself that uh, make your self tapes uh, easier for yourself? Yes. Um, like knowing the material really well uh, is just like the way to do it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'm just talking about lines. Lines. Like so just lines. knowing the lines super well, it, it, you know, that I feel like is the, for me, the baseline place where, you know, you can start to have fun right. throwing some, some things on tape. Yeah. Um, I've certainly been in situations where I've been like, you know, given something last minute or just been lazy and like, it's like torture when you don't know the lines, right, right. you know, as well as, yeah. as you should. I, I yeah. totally agree with that. Just the more that you are prepared and you know your lines super, super, super well, then you are then able to kind of uh, relax a little bit more when you're doing your self tapes. Uh, and then so wonderful with the self tapes that you can do it as many times as you want until you kind of see the one that you really 
that you know that you're happy with right yeah 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 it's Good. it is it's great it's uh I, I definitely like that I do sort of miss like the kind of you know sort of beginning middle and end of of going in for something you know like that you know you don't have to do this whole uh production of taping and getting your wife to tape and she hates doing it and you know, right. then right, you find right. someone else and yeah right right yeah and then you have to get yeah. someone else and is the lighting good right the background the lighting good, good. right yes yeah there we go yeah. right um, um <laughs> another beautiful question here um and a really good question so what tools do you use to translate direction that doesn't align with your training mm -hmm. So with, does that make sense? Mm, very good question. You know, I I heard um, I, I I heard this interview with Mel Brooks recently. Um, that was so great. Uh, um, with Alan Alda, he has like this amazing podcast um, called Clear and Vivid, which is mostly about science, but sometimes he gets his, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. cool friends to come and do it um and and he was saying like that the, the the secret to working with difficult studio heads is to say yes to every note like no matter what it is just say yes um and you know like he, he was talking about the producers and how uh you know that his 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 producer told him to fire gene wilder hmm. you know that he wasn't he was funny looking and you know, wasn't funny enough. And, um, and he just said, sure, you know, no problem. And then he just didn't do it. And nobody really like <laughs> gave him a hard time about it ultimately. So that's, it has been his secret. Um, yeah. And I think there's some wisdom there. I don't know if it's totally, you know, perfectly applicable to working with a director, but I do think there is like a virtue and just kind of like not fighting the note, like hearing it, and and then sort of you know finding a way of interpreting it on you know on your own terms um or just ignoring it and kind of like giving the thumbs up yeah 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 um absolutely i totally uh hear that and that is a really wonderful question uh, so that uh so i think sometimes when we do get you know bad direction actually it kind of freezes the actor's instrument and then you kind of go okay uh and i think you're absolutely right you go yeah all right let me let me see what i can do with that let me yeah yeah i can do that and then um let Let's see if you can give yourself a little adjustment, uh, try a little something, see what you're going to, uh, you know, observe. Uh, yeah, but I totally agree with that. Just kind of, oh, okay, like, you know, within that parameter, how are we able to kind of, uh, kind of yes and, so that you're yes anding that, which is a really wonderful yeah. um, um, uh, thing. And also, so speaking of Alan Alda, right, so you were kind of, you worked in a, uh, this like um was like Horace and Pete is that correct uh -huh. yes yeah. so and with Alan yes. Alda. and how was that yes. how was the experience um with the great Alan Alda right you know uh he was like just a gentleman what you you know mm -hmm. what you would imagine him to be like he was he was like that and um you know actually I, I won't get into the full details of of this uh experience but like I, I did on that project which I you know it was like I had one short scene where I talked to Alan Alda and then Louis CK who's you know that was it was his project um and I just got speaking of a ter you know a, a difficult note I just got kind of barked at um in in a way that was really unhelpful to me um and and Alan Alda like he just he you know I, the thing that I did was sort of I, I kind of cut him off um you know during one of his speeches um you know for whatever reason and and he he was just such a gentleman and like 
you know, sort of took the the blame for it. Like he said, oh, he thought I was up on my lines. And, you know, he was just a mensch. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So. Wow, wow, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. Um, yeah, and I guess it's okay to say that Louis C.K. was the one who barked at me. No, no, well, it's like, <laughs> you have to, I mean, you know, again, talking about that tension, you know, tension and yeah. how are we able to, uh, you know, creative people express themselves uh, in different ways. And then how are we able to, if someone is barking at you, to again, calm your system down and uh, just kind of bring it back to the story, kind of bring yes. it back to the story. But it, it, it certainly helps when you have collaborators who are especially like, you know, the famous elder, right. you know, statesman on the right. set who can sort of, you know, make a real difference by, mm -hmm. you know, just being nice. Yeah, being nice. And then just, you know, and then that they create that whole, you know, vibe of kindness and, and how can we tell this story with as much kindness as we possibly can and yeah. uh yeah and so wonderful that you've you know been able to like be on set with these you know amazing people um oh I do have another question here what is yeah I do uh, yes thank you uh for asking this you know what is the best advice that you can give to a beginning actors uh that you've learned during your career so yeah, what is some some advice that you can give to actors who are just kind of starting out their career? Um, yeah, what is some good advice for young actors here? Well, I mean, certainly good advice is to study at the Barra Group. <laughs> um, that's like, I mean, I've definitely given that advice to, <laughs> you know, uh, someone who's starting out and 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 they've done it and it's been really you know instrumental mm -hmm. um and yeah i guess the the thing i'd say is like and i have to, to i still deal with this but like keep i would say keep your focus on the art and the you know the 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 beauty of what you know these disciplines offer, um, whether it's theater, film, TV, uh, like that. If you love them, then then that that should be the guide. Um, it's very easy to get sort of heady and bogged down in the business side of things. Uh, I, I've found and you know if I come back to what I really care about right. you know I, I I gain some perspective right 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 it's so so true just like again keeping your focus on the art and I'm always saying that creative people also need to keep uh, being creative and kind of find your, yes. your your tribe of people to you know keep uh creating your own projects and just kind of keep doing yes. it every day just keep doing it every day and uh um that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Oh, I have another, another question. So back to the self tape. So the self tapes, um, what would you say makes a self tape stand out? Sometimes it's scary to make bold choices. So, um, right. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, um, I think that if you're, telling the story of the scene and you're you know finding you know spontaneity in it and you're not sort of getting um into patterns and stuff the real kind of uh one of the great things about taping with my wife sarah is she's very very uh vocal and and um and keen to sort of point out when I'm getting into patterns. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it hurts sometimes, but it's- It's uh, all process, it's all process, right? Yeah, 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 well, right, yes, yes, absolutely. It doesn't really hurt, but more, more just kind of, like, let me just be done with this thing. Um, but I think, yeah, finding ways to kind of 
release the tension and get out of the patterns and find spontaneity and like tell the story like that what else what else do you want yeah in tape? In my, you know, that's my I, I totally I totally agree with that because I think also just to even looking at these self tapes sometimes even those uh those um that sentence bold choices kind of puts obligation onto the actor to mm -hmm. feel that they have to like do something big and bold, uh, which can be very scary. Whereas yeah. we're just kind of, you're just serving the story. So you're serving the text. And I think when Matthew said, the more you just learn the lines or you know your lines really, 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 really well that you can be so loose with it so that you can be uh, even more real, even more spontaneous and looser when you know the lines really, really well that I think people are looking at, oh, how, how real is this? Uh, um, how spontaneous is this? So we you know, come into it like rather than, how can I not take my eyes off this actor? Uh, rather than looking at, you know, just someone just making bold choices in order to make bold choices that might not be serving the story. Uh, uh, that again, I think as Matthew said, the more that relaxed we can get and it's just easier that we can, you know, get with it. It's, uh, um, you know, gonna, be easier for us. And then it's going to pop off the, you know, when you're looking at those tapes, you go, oh, that guy's really real. That's, wow. Yeah. That's really real. Yeah. Well, let's tell your hand. Yeah. 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 Feels like he's just talking to me. Like, <laughs> right. Right. And, and that, like, maybe, you know, that the spontaneous nature of, of what someone's doing is, is surprising and, and something that, you know, a, a casting director or director hasn't seen in the material or in in the tapes they've watched so that in a sense is kind of a bold you know direction right that absolutely that you are who you are and it's like uh they might have again a different idea of uh of a character uh and then all of a sudden they see your tape and you've totally switched it up i mean that happens all the time that's happened to us when we're casting stuff we go oh i kind of have an idea of this and somebody comes in and goes no that that we've got to cast that person that person's just uh amazing so it kind of blows the our little ideas in our head like out the window yeah yeah, yeah. Which, like you yourself just coming in uh is the unique thing which is you know and that's all we can do is just come in and be ourself and do our thing yeah that's uh that but that's a great that's a great quick question to how can we just kind of take those yeah obligations off of ourselves um so i know with this new baby you haven't had too much time to um you know uh read that much but any good books that you've read uh recently well one book um that i read like right before joni was born um was uh called Operating Instructions um, by Anne Lamont. Okay. And it, Anne Lamont. Um, and it's, it was recommended to me because I was having a baby and it's like a journal of her first year with her son. Oh um, and uh -huh. yeah, she wrote it in the eighties and mm -hmm. it's so funny and uh, poignant and and beautiful and I, I, it really did kind of get me like ready <laughs> so it was very vivid too very you know did not hold back at all yeah um, yeah yeah that's yeah. that's wonderful that's beautiful but well, she's such yeah. a beautiful writer um so, yeah. and then another question i think i know the answer to this one already but uh that i'd love to throw out is you know what has moved you deeply um recently, recently. <laughs> right yeah it would be insulting if i didn't say you have to say that so joni yeah. joni but um yes. insulting to her um <laughs> I, well yes of course i have to say i've been you know deeply um moved and kind of uh transformed i you know in a certain sense and, and but also kind of just made more, I feel like myself having uh, Joni here. And um, yeah, it's, it's it, I, I, I love being with her and, you know, it's just this incredible journey so far. So yeah, that, that yeah. has changed, changed things a lot around yeah. here. That is, that's so awesome. That is so, yeah. so great. Um, 
Uh, wow. Well, I have, I have like, I, we could keep talking and keep talking and talking, but I'm <laughs> kind of like we're at time, but I want to thank, uh, uh, everyone so much for your incredible questions and, and Matthew, I want to thank you so much for your, um, your chat today and your inspiration. We are so deeply, deeply, uh, proud and excited for you and all the incredible work that you have, you know, done in the last 10 years and, uh, and the beautiful, you know, arrival of your gorgeous uh, daughter and, uh, and, uh, and your wife, you know, giving a home birth, unbelievable. So uh, really, we're so proud of you. And we so look forward to the new, uh, you know, the new Noah Bombach uh, yes. series uh, coming Thank out you, yeah. and, uh, and all of this, all of your work. So um um, happy holidays to everyone, and thank you uh, so much. It's yeah. so good to see you. Thank and whenever you. you're thank not you. working, you can always like you know come back in and have classes with us. <laughs> All right. I would love to. Um, yeah, th thank you so much. This has been so fun and interesting, and um, yeah, the the Bear Group has been, was such a major part of you know my uh, sort of evolution as a artist um it, it's an honor to to get to do this so well, it was really thank you thank really you nice yeah okay great well uh thank you all and um take care yeah, thanks everybody great thank great questions thank yeah you. thank you matthew okay bye okay. take care